Welcome back, everybody. So now that we know um, how to build well-formed formulas in first of the logic, so we know how to build kind of these basic sentences, strings of characters uh, that are, are well-formed, the next step is to assign meaning to this uh, string of characters. So, so far, these formulas are just string of characters that have been built using certain rules. Now we want to see how we assign a meaning to them. Okay, so let's start with a few examples. So consider the case where we have this the vocabulary of groups essentially, one constant symbol and one binary operation that takes two uh, elements and gives out one. Um, and let me ask you a few questions. So let's consider this formula. There exists, uh, for every x, there exists a y such that y times or star x equals e. Is it true in the structure z0 class. So, uh, okay, so what do I mean here by this? I'm gonna explain what this means in a second, but for now, let's just, uh, let me just tell you. So, we have, uh, this means we're, got, we're talking on z, the integers, the integer numbers, and when we are, this is a guy that zero represents e, and star represents plus. Plus is the, oper the addition operation on the integers, and zero is the zero of the integers, so that's how we are interpreting the e and the star of the language. So if those are e and star, is it true that for every x there exists a y such that y star x equals e? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. And this x, what is this x? x is equal essentially minus y, right? The opposite. That's the one that if you add it to, to uh, x, you get back 0. Okay, so yes. What about, uh, is this true in the natural numbers? Well, no. If you take, uh, let's say, 1, there is no number that you add to 1 to get 0. So again, here this is one is e and this one is not 0. So the answer is no. Same sentence. Uh, is it true on the integers? But now, uh, here I mean multiplication. Star is multiplication. Times. The times operation. 1 and the time operations, no. It's like if you take 2, there is no number that you multiply by 2 and you get back, back 1. Uh, so, no. What about if you look at the rationals and uh, the multiplication again? This is this star here I meant multiplication. Is it true? Well, now if you have 2, if you take 2 for, for x, so if x equals 2, then you can, you can take y equals one half. It belongs to the rationals, so in this structure is good. So for every number you can take the inverse, and that's going to be the y, except for zero. So if x equals zero, there's no y. No y is such that x star y y star x equals. So the answer is no, because uh, zero is a counterexample. So what about if we take um, the positive rational number? So here, the plus here, uh, I mean positive rational numbers. Then yes, then every number has an inverse. So this is true. For every x, you can take y to be the inverse. What about uh, on the reals? Yes, the same thing. Every number uh, in the positive reals, positive reals, yes. Um, so here's a question for you guys. Um, so the, these two things are true in the reals and in the rationals. And um, yeah, both are very nice groups. These, um, the, the multiplicative groups with, um, of, on the positives, these multiplicative groups. So here's a question for you guys. Can we find a well-formed formula that is true in uh, the reals, but it's not true in the rationals. I mean, the, I'm talking about the reals with the one for e and with only this, only the one and multiplication, and the rationals with multiplication. And the positive, I'm talking about positive reals and the positive rationals with multiplication. Can we find a sentence true in one and false in the other one that will allow us to separate them to, to show that they are different? Okay, I leave you guys with that question to think about. Now let's move on 
to consider structures in general, right? So now I want to generalize everything that we have here, but to a general setting where tau is not just this simple example, but general example, okay? So what is tau here? So tau here now is a general case. So it has a bunch of constant symbols, maybe one, maybe two, maybe infinitely many, some number, has a bunch of function symbols, again, one, two, could be infinitely many, and each function symbol is associated to an arity that tells how many inputs it has, and a bunch of relation symbols, okay? And a tau structure is gonna be a way where you can interpret all these symbols, a space where you can interpret the symbol. Okay, so calligraphic M is gonna be a tau structure, it's gonna be of this form. It's gonna have, well, it's of this form. It's gonna have a set M, which is just a set that we call the domain for the structure or the universe. Sometimes you call it the universe, sometimes it's domain. So this is your universe of objects. Then inside M, we have some elements, A0, A1, which are just elements of M, which are gonna be representing the constants. Then some functions, the same number of functions here that we as, as we have function symbols, and the function gi has to is gonna it's gonna be an operation actually. It's gonna take a and a tuple, a tuple of size a, and give you one element of m, and this a here is gonna be the same as additive of the symbol fi. Okay, so this gi is trying is trying to interpret the symbol fi. So it's gonna have the same number of inputs, right? And the same number of Gs as, it, as there are Fs. The idea here is that, um, well, it's, it's very good to uh, uh, understand the difference. F here is a symbol, I think it's just a character that we use. And G here is an actual function. It's an actual function that goes from this set of tuples to M. And then, and then we have a bunch of relations. Actually, we have more than those just there. They have like uh, dots, dots, dots. We have as many as there are relations in our vocabulary. And the idea is that uh, these relations are not actual, actual subsets of the A tuples from M. So A here is additive of R. So if R says R has additive two, Ri, then HI has to have additive two also, the same additive. And then essentially what's going on with this? So the, a structure is telling us one way, a tau structure, why one way of interpreting uh, tau formulas, the formulas in the language that has to do with this particular vocabulary. So the quantifiers for all and exist, every time we write that for all and exist, they range over the elements of M. So M, this, this Roman M, is giving us the universe of all objects that we have. So when we say for every x, we mean for every x in the universe. There, is, there exists an x, we mean there exists an x in the universe. We're gonna see this more formally uh, in the next video. The, these elements that we picked are representing, interpre interpreting the constant symbols. These functions that we picked here are interpreting the function symbols. And these relations, uh, sorry, these relations are interpreting these ones. Uh, remember, a relation is like a true or false when you apply it to a tuple. So here we consider a subset, essentially the subset of all the tuples where the thing is true. Okay, it's gonna be, um, we're gonna define this formally in a second. Let's look back at the examples that we had in the previous uh, slide right here. So see here we have a bunch of uh, structures um, and we are essentially like this line, this first thing up here is telling us how to interpret uh, E. So all of these are the interpretations of E. Sometimes we chose zero, sometimes we chose one. Uh, and all of these, these operations is times, 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 plus, plus. These are the interpretations of the star. So we could, we could you choose any function to interpret star. And then these are the domains, Z, N, Z, Q, Q, R. This is the domain, so when we talk about... 
So when we say uh, for every x there exists a y such that blah blah blah, we mean we are taking this x and the y's from the domain. So from r in this case, from q in this case. So the domain tells us where to uh, consider the element when we talk about for every and there exists. All right, so we got that these guys up here, all of these guys here are tau structures. These are E star structures. Okay, but then we're gonna have different vocabularies and that's gonna give us, give rise to different kinds of structures. Okay, so with this formalism, we now know how to interpret the symbols in a vocabulary. Now we need to go a bit more formula, more formal on how to um, define exactly what it means to be true uh, for a sentence or not. See you in the next video.